last month firefox as a browser went down now when you hear this statement it might seem absurd at first because what does it even mean that a browser went down aren't websites supposed to go down the services companies like aws digital ocean which go down all the time but you know what, what does this mean that the browser is not working if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow so firefox went down on january 13 2022 this year with the uh, two hours of downtime worldwide and they have just released a blog post on the technical details of what has happened and it's interesting i mean when you read the statement that the browser went down it definitely creates that interest of what has happened within the browser itself aren't browsers supposed to be not dependent on the internet itself to function so that was the case with firefox but there's a little bit of twist here so let's understand what has happened so i'm going to summarize this really quick i'm not going to get into technicalities of a lot of things but this graph over here is just firefox some sort of internal dashboard maybe which shows the amount of errors which kept on coming in into their some sort of tracking or whatever they have implemented and seeing that it has been shooting up way too much they knew that something has went wrong now what has went wrong was that there was an invisible change made by google cloud provider and firefox as a browser uses google cloud provider for some telemetry or some information right you can see it says that it includes telemetry certificate management crash reporting and other similar functionality and this is done by google cloud platform for firefox right so in this case if let's say firefox wants to know how much time a user has spent on their browser they might want to convey that information to their own servers then they are using gcp hosted servers or rather load balances which they are saying now what has happened was that apparently um, i don't use gcp that much but apparently google cloud includes a setup includes an option for http3 support on these load balancers and that was set as automatic for firefox it was not enabled it was not disabled it was automatic right and google what it did was that it changed this automatic setting to behave as enabled automatically right one day one fine morning 728 utc some engineer at google pushed the button maybe some in turn which was an unannounced change which made http3 the default and what this means this means that google cloud platform these load balancers now can accept http3 traffic it does not mean that the support or anything is dropped for http2 or anything like that but it just means that http3 traffic can be supported and if you don't know what http3 is we have done a bunch of videos i think on http2 and http3 and how this differs but you can think of http3 as a kind of a complete rewrite of the http protocol itself how the internal of the protocol works the communication and on the network side not so much on the the, you know the headers and cookies that, that stuff is still the same but the network layer it's completely redone http3 does not use tcp it uses udp it uses quick protocol which is built on udp and it's completely different it's a binary protocol right so obviously it would not have backward compatibilities with http2 but that was not the case why firefox went down now you see that firefox said that we are using this infrastructure the google cloud platform infrastructure for you know telemetry and this and that and anything Thing. and if you just read this blog post until here you might assume that the reason firefox went down was because something related to http3 triggered crashing of the telemetry which therefore you know maybe your browsing was a callback function a success callback function of telemetry being reported that's not the case with firefox what happened was that this http3 change actually triggered a bug in their internal library in their internal system so again they go through a little bit of technicalities but the bigger picture over here is that firefox obviously as a browser has some internals has some deep internals right and one of those things is the network stack of firefox now as firefox says here all the http3 connections go through neko but in case of direct network access it goes through an intermediate library called wireduck now the point here to remember is that http3 is still functional in a way i mean you can create a server which supports http3 and if you use firefox to browse that server your website would work so it's not a problem with http3 implementation of firefox itself but it is a problem in case of you know internal service some internal firefox service using an http3 api for communication you can see that's that's the reason they mentioned that this works fine for web content and other requests in our code which is you know the regular web content but over here when it is passed through wireduct which is 
is done for their internal direct network access stuff something happens with the content length header the casing is is messed up a little bit you know lower cases and it's case sensitive case insensitive something is happening over here which is the bug and that is the reason their networking stack actually ran into an infinite loop now this is the final in ingredient for the bug but we again know the problem now that it's a bug with the implementation of the wire duct thing right so it's changing its case the content length case it results in some bug within the library itself which leads to an infinite loop inside of your browser itself right so that means because of that infinite loop and because firefox uses one socket thread this loop actually blocked any further network communication and made the browser unresponsive so the point here is that your browser was affected if and only if your firefox browser was actually trying to do some telemetry calls if it wasn't trying to do any telemetry calls at all then your browser would have just worked fine because that the point of problem was when it tried its internal service tried to reach out to a google platform google cloud server on http3 which was never tested with firefox browser before and there was a bug a special bug in the in the whole pipeline so this bug was an interesting bug honestly because you can see that firefox is a big company it has a lot of developers a lot of good developers great developers some of the best people in the world and still things like these happens even after a lot of unit tests integration tests end to end tests you see that a lot of time it's more about how quickly you can act on certain things than just you know making sure that everything is in place of course you should make sure everything is in place but this just shows you that bugs are inevitable services like even aws goes down all the time and software is getting complex on a daily basis browsers are probably one of the most complicated pieces of software which we have today so this shows you that bugs are inevitable you have to live with them just like you have to live with anything else but yeah i mean as a developer when you see these things it actually gives you comfort in a way in a weird way that other people who you think are great or the best developers can also do mistakes like this and stuff happens all the time in tech world so you probably should not bash yourself up or beat yourself up if you are still a beginner or still learning a few things because you see that this stuff happens on the highest levels it's just that the bugs and the stuff gets way more complicated as you learn and learn new things you won't see like it being crashing with a thing where somebody has just forgot on a semicolon i mean come on that's that's just a stupid show but still these bugs happen right so that's that's interesting so yeah that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you learned something new do you use firefox do you even use firefox i think that should be my first question if you do did you face this problem and were you able to go through this blog post understand a few things understand this video if yes make sure you leave a like and comment down on what you think about this whole incident a browser going down that's an interesting one that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this this video till the end also if you are not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching